I think like the 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 fact that it hits at something so fundamental to the division between ex witnesses and current witnesses, like it's the dividing line, right? Shunning, like it's the mm. thing that separates all of us. And that, to me, is one of the most important messages that the wider public needs to hear about. So I personally don't know if they're going to try and defend that or even talk about it. Because if they talk about it, people are going to think about it. And if they think about it, they're going to see that it is just straight up a coercive practice that tears apart families. So. We'll turn it Yeah. Okay. Um, Don't worry. How about how about you do an intro and then we know like it's official. Yes. It's on. Okay. Or I could do I, I I could do an intro. I'm I'm good at my intros. Oh, do it. Do it. Do it. Wally, okay, do okay. it, Wally. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Apostate Coalition. It is me, Jonathan. You know him as Ex Jehovah's Witness Awake, and my queen Ryan. You know her as Cult Tastic. We are here to talk about persecution in the religious community. So welcome, I, I am Glenn. Everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Good, Thank you. <laughs> I, that I was amazing. I, that's a keeper. <laughs> that's okay. a keeper. I One like take, it. Baby, that's what we like. Now One persecute take, me, it. daddy. <laughs> well, okay. no, stop that. <laughs> so I, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's for the, the break off rooms. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, the green room. Gail, yeah. you keeping it warm in there? Just making sure. Checking we're in. Gonna, green we're going to have to start saying this is a positive coalition, not a BDSM. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, if you okay. were confused, we're talking about religious persecution, yes. not BDS. Not the actual not. like the tying up kind of stuff. So now that what has come down with Norway, what's going on with Norway, how are they going to approach? I, I am super curious to hear how you guys think that they're going to approach this. Is this going to be super persecution? Are they going to gloss over it? What do you think? I think like the... The, the fact that it hits at something so fundamental to the division between ex-witnesses and current witnesses, like, it's the dividing line, right? Shunning. Like, it's the mm. thing that separates all of us. And that, to me, is one of the most important messages that the wider public needs to hear about. So I personally don't know if they're going to try and defend that or even talk about it. Because if they talk about it, people are going to think about it. And if they think about it, they're going to see that it is just straight up a coercive practice that tears apart families. So if I was like on Watchtower's PR system, I would never say a single thing about it. I would do no like post on the JW newsroom because then people are going to mm. ask themselves the question. And it's the question they don't want to ask because it's the thing that keeps them from ever talking or engaging with ex-witnesses. Right. And now it's right in their face. It's mm -hmm. smacking them. There's no, I mean, they have to address it, whether or not they do it with their members or not. I guess you're thinking they won't. What about you, Jonathan? Where's your money? What you thinking? Well, let me, let me have my representative come on and say something. Oh, there you beautiful, go. beautiful. How <laughs> you doing? Beautiful. Hi. And How you cat. feeling? I'm feeling a little bit better. As you can see, I probably look a mess, but sorry. No, you're gorgeous, Queen. Stop it. <laughs> Thank you for coming. We're just yeah. talking about the persecution kink. And now that the, I don't know if you've heard, I, I'm guessing you've heard about the Jehovah's <laughs> Witnesses possibly losing their um, religious regist registration in Norway. So, mm. yeah, you, do you, yeah, this is like breaking news as of like, yesterday or something so they've got a short window of time where they need to do something about their shunning policies or they might be not just losing their grants but also losing the registration <laughs> i did not know that yeah so we were just wondering do we think that they are going to address it with their members and spin it as being you know persecuted poor me or are they just gonna like Ooh, pretend it didn't happen. Let's like, mm, hopefully nobody finds out we're getting in trouble here. What you thinking? You might, so did you guys read Crisis of Conscience? I haven't yet and I need to. I feel like a bad ex-witness. I like a little bit of it. You read a little bit? There was I've a read it section. twice. 
Dang. Glenn's an overachiever. <laughs> Good job, Glenn. Good job, Glenn. <laughs> where it was talking about military service. And and it was like a Hispanic, maybe I think Mexico, and then um, an African country. They both were dealing with military service issues. Okay. And the governing body told those in the Mexican country, right. hey, oh, take, right. take, the, take the card. The card, even yep. Even though, you know, technically, oh, way, right? you're not supposed to take this you know, military service, but take the card anyway, it's okay. But then when they went to the African country, they said, no, you can't do that because you have to remain neutral. So a lot of people mm -hmm. lost their, their lives and were put into jail. I feel like it's going to be a very similar situation like that, mm -hmm. where they're probably going to hide that. Try oh, to hide they have it. like a, a double standard of yeah. well, we're going to capitulate to the Norwegian government and end shunning there and just not tell anybody. <gasps> oh, I wonder I, if they will do that. That could be kind of huge, actually, if we had a similar huge. situation where they're like, "Wow, I guess we want our grants and our charitable or our status as a religious organization." Right. So maybe right. they just give in. Wasn't it not that? It wasn't that long ago i mean i know like probably like the 2000s or the 90s i thought i was reading that they are finally in mexico that they were able to start using their bibles out in the ministry again because they for like years and years they weren't even using bibles at their meetings because they didn't want to be considered a religious organization because of the ramifications of that and so oh. yeah it, it's it's not like in their distant distant past that that happened if you give me a minute i could probably find it I remember that vaguely. I do remember that. That's weird. Here's the th here's and the thing I'm thinking about though. Um, if they really talk about it much, isn't it kind of the Barbara Streisand effect? What do you that's mean? What they call it. Apparently, there's a thing where Barbara Streisand people were looking at her house, like pictures of her house or something like that. So she basically complained, and then it just brought attention to it. And now she she had like right. a zillion people looking at her house, and it was exactly. I remember the that. Effect. Yes, I, I do remember that. So this is a this is a very pivotal moment because this is going to do this is going to say a lot to not only just us as ex witnesses but to their current members. As Wally said, are they going to capitulate? Are they going to bend there and soften? If they do it there and people in other countries find out, will they push? Realizing like, okay, if we push back, maybe we do have a. Mm, Oh, I juicy. think they're going to try really hard to keep that as under wraps as they possibly can. And if it gets out, they'll probably make a statement or something. <laughs> and kind of just blow past it because they do that sometimes. They'll make a statement, but people are so in the murky, muddy waters. They don't really understand what's being said. They don't even realize they've been given new light sometimes. <laughs> Well, and they've been working so. really hard to sort of protect their image as a religious organization yeah. when it comes to how they're they're viewed by governments. Are you guys familiar with like the whole Cessner uh, thing mm. that's run by that Introvene Massimo? I did a bunch of research on it and I oh, made an, okay. a video. I read like an 800 page long thing. Oh, that I, thing. Yeah, yeah, I did like weeks of no. research. And then Jake was like, oh, I made a video on it. I'm like, ah, I'll let you have this one. It's fine. I know <laughs> I, I speed run so much stuff. So it's just kind of sitting in the in the bag right now. But um, they're basically just for the speed run version of it is they're employing a, a group of quote unquote experts that are experts for hire essentially for scientology for any like hardcore religious group basically oh. that argue in behalf of these fringe religious groups to say well our practices aren't really that bad are they and like one of their big arguments that they make is well you can't compel anyone to associate with i mean what kind of world are we going to live in if you just force people to talk to other people and they're missing the fundamental point of it being about children raised into it that can't actually make a choice because they're children yeah right right there wow you should release that i don't know if i've seen that i i feel like i remember that something about it being tweeted like maybe several months ago but 
Yeah, it's been a while. Release the footage, Glenn. <laughs> Release the footage. Oh, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I have so much stuff in the back catalog. It's all good. Yes. Really well, I do wonder if. I'm sorry. Would you say? Oh, I just said I haven't seen it, so I was like, I was like, please release it. I watch all of Wally's videos. <laughs> <laughs> you're very a, good videos. Informative. You're a masochist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking. Uh, while Wally's looking something up, um, I would just share what the um, persecution brings up at, on the uh, website. Oh, please I persecute me. Persecute me. I'm a good girl. All righty then. <laughs> I've been a good little girl. Uh, oh, let's see. Wow. Wow. Okay, so uh, this is just looking at persecution and videos. So you know, there's got to be a gazillion articles that have persecution. No reason. Wait, no reason to fear persecution. Yeah, just go right into it. Just, mm, just get comfy with it. Just snuggle into the persecution. But yet they made a whole bunker video basically instilling fear. Whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> I, you yeah. don't know how to feel. You are so emotionally wrought because you're up, you're down. You're looking at your ass one night and the next day you're, I don't know, looking in the toilet. I have no idea. <laughs> the, the crazy thing, though, is you have to remember at the end of the day when they're reading the bible and coming up with this doctrine it's it's sort of like the classic story mode right where they basically have to be the the protagonists in their own little animes here and they necessarily have to have an antagonist you know someone that is resisting them and any good story just kind of falls flat on its face unless you have someone that's like persecuting you some sort of resistance so mm -hmm. i mean it's a tale as old as time whoa i'm on screen now that's a lot um but it's like you have you know god versus satan and they're battling it out and then that just goes all the way down through the ages of moses versus egypt and then the israelites versus the, the canaanites and then you have israel's people versus the other nations and then you have jesus versus the romans and the pharisees so it's just like the retelling of basically the same story over and over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So we're just in the modern day version of the same thing that they've been saying for so long. Sorry, I go on re weird rants. I'm going to shut up. No, my it's like they have to have an enemy. They have to yeah. have somebody yeah. that they're up against in order to feel as if they're accomplishing whatever sadistic work the New Testament told them they had to do when they go preach and... The more slaps you get in the face, the more you know that God is on your side because that makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. And you're not a hero unless you're getting slapped in the face. You're not seen as, you know, Ex yeah. the, the exactly. victor of the whole thing. You just got to turn those no's into yeses. Somehow, knock, those, knock those walls down and make them bridges to open communication with your... <laughs> oh, <laughs> the the classic illustrations. Hmm. <laughs> well, notice... Two of these parts here say you can de rejoice despite persecution. So they expect you to be persecuted yet really digging it. This yeah. is great. Your life can suck. But when I see your face, you better be smiling. Okay? Enjoy that. Enjoy the persecution. Don't be sad. You have no reason to be sad. You're going to live forever. Why are you sad? It does not sound Silly. like a very healthy relationship that people enter into when they become Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -mm. It's exhausting. I'm, I'm, try I'm trying it is to exhausting uh, because you're never right no matter what you do you're just never it's not the right emotion to exude at that time i'm trying to channel my samuel heard a happy witness a, ha <laughs> a happy husband is a joyful husband or something whatever he said he's so monotone we're gonna get canceled for this one i guarantee it <laughs> what why <laughs> <laughs> keep it a stack. <laughs> what I do? You're not allowed. Wait, I guess you're not allowed, allowed to make to fun Steve, of the governing body. If I'm allowed to be Stephen Lett, then you should be allowed to be Samuel Hurd, I suppose. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's, it's all, all good. It's, it's all good. <laughs> I want to be Tony Morrison throwing burnt hot dogs around and looking down from the helicopter at all the burnt bodies. Please. You have a six sense hey. of humor. Have you ever seen burnt hot dog from a helicopter? Blister. Well, Broiled, baked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, that was. I never really learned the governing body's name. Like, I really, I really did. No, that's a good thing. I really that is didn't. a good thing. I hate the fact that I know who these guys are. <laughs> no, I like, I, I was in for 10 years and you think I would know. And I really don't. I, I didn't really care to know, but I'm the black guy. Cause of course, why not? So <laughs> <laughs> gotta be him. But I'm like, I don't know. I just, I never really, I don't know their personalities. <laughs> The broadcast was the hardest thing to get through. <laughs> I just, I didn't care. I that didn't was care. the real persecution, to be honest. Yeah, they have no personality. I think the persecution was having, is having to watch these emotionless robots pretend that they care. Exude the emotions on your face, oh, but yeah. inside, I feel nothing. The, the crazy thing, too, is how they can take the stand for... Or, you know, take this position where, hey, you should be joyful and you should be willing and ready to accept um, any persecution that might come your way. And yet when a challenge or anything comes towards them, they are the first ones to run away from that. They yes. are not going to be the ones that are, you know, facing the persecution of all of the 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 lawsuits that are happening right now. They run away. I mean, Garrett Loesch, I, I still come back to that because it was one of the most shocking things ever. And I saw it while I was still a witness digging through their court cases i'm not right. a member of watchtower oh, yeah. i have no control like oh, you're lying God. you're lying right. out of your teeth to avoid getting any persecution while at the same time or consequences saying, hey just keep going guys don't you worry about it you, you everything will be fine the paradise is right around the corner mm -hmm. jehovah loves someone that accepts this persecution while at the same time they're just like shitting their pants and running and hiding it's so disgusting because to me. Because they create the system. They've created all the rules. They're not upheld to them. Just like Jehovah, he creates all these laws. He creates gravity. He He's created all these scientific things, but it doesn't mean he's beholden to them. And it's literally how the governing body sees themselves. They think they've created all this, but they don't at all have to abide by any of the bullshit that they spew. But when it comes to us, oh, you better believe they're going to get their blood. They're going to get their money. They even admitted it. They have an article where they were talking about sometimes it's okay to lie in court mm -hmm. if it's going to be beneficial to... Stop. No, it's an it's a, it's a actual yes. article that it says that... Because they said that, you know, in cases like Jesus, when he was being, you know, persecuted and he was put on trial, he held back some information from those who were questioning him in order for Jehovah's purposes to be manifested. So in a similar way. I mean, to be honest, what happened with a, a, a Jewish rabbi that lived over 2000 years ago has a direct correlation to the protecting of, of children today. That, that was two things. E easy, easy peasy. Makes sense. Makes to be, honestly, to be fair, if they truly looked at it from a historical standpoint, they'd realize they should want nothing to do with a lot of the New Testament. But because they enjoy that persecution, persecution complex, they want to have something to be upset about. And, oh, they killed our savior. They're so, how did they not recognize he was right here before our eyes, but... We're going to show the world. We're going to tell the world about our savior. He's literally the biggest like P-U-S, P-U-S-S-Y. Like dude should have bolted. Like he knew they were coming for him. He could have helped. He could have hit another day. Like, come on. They didn't have uh, credit cards to track your purchase <laughs> history. They didn't know where he was. Dude could have dipped out the back door of the temple and nobody would have been the wiser. But he was like, oh, it's me. <laughs> God's son, take me. Yeah, you freaking <laughs> pervert. I, I feel that, was, that was a tirade. <laughs> I feel like I could make about a four minute super cut of just Ryan making weird things. I feel like you <laughs> should not do that at all. No, <laughs> I said I could. I didn't yeah. say I would. 
Save that for OnlyFans. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> Only apostates. <laughs> Do you guys think that the persecution, like, sort of complex that they have is just a direct result of them seeing the world in ones and zeros? Like, we are right. Everyone else Black is wrong. White, so yeah. anytime anyone says anything that's contrary to us, it's automatically persecution. Like, yeah. yeah, they have a default, too. They have a default to... I can see that. Either A or B. Yeah, that makes sense. I have a theory. I'm not saying it's right, but I do have a theory. I wonder if there's like someone that's just behind, that's really just thinking behind the scenes. Like, because think about it, you have this persecution complex that shields you and everyone in that bubble. That if we're being attacked, that we're definitely got people. It's mm -hmm. kind of like proof. a good master mind to kind of like. Because they know they're going to get persecuted. They know it because of their policies. So what better way to say, hey, to make sure we keep everybody in, if if we get persecuted, we're God's people. I think it's like a mastermind, whoever's behind, at least for me, I feel like I somebody think it orchestrated is. it, to be honest. It's a ploy. It definitely is a ploy. It's a, it's a tactic that's been deployed this is Jesus time, obviously. Well, when you think about it, every other um, convention, well, every convention and every other broadcasting at least, has got some sort of song or a part or something or other that talks about, you know, hiding from the cops and being jailed and, you know, looking out for persecution. So clearly they think they're the ones that are, that are important. They're the ones that the authorities are going to come for because they're God's people. Mm. Clearly, I wonder what they'll get them for. The way that they make it seem like in the videos, it's like they did something, and that's why the police or, or the army or whoever is coming after them. But like, what what do they really do for them to be? <laughs> well, well, there's God. even one. Sorry, go ahead. Well, God puts it in their hearts, doesn't he, to attack his own people yeah. or something? Because that oh. makes perfect sense. That makes. Hey, sense. I'm going to make the governments of the earth attack you guys so i can protect you sounds exactly like what he did in uh with pharaoh i'm going to harden pharaoh's heart therefore God's i plan. make myself look better yeah i need to look uh better in the eyes of my people so could you go ahead and send out a couple squads so i can protect right. from you <laughs> i need someone to uh attack me not too bad not too bad don't hurt me too much but just make it look bad i think it's so hilarious that the ultimate like test of someone's faith when it comes to the great tribulation how the governing body are just oh no we're gonna be in heaven at this point we we don't want anything to do with that crap it's out. Like, yeah. even, even in their doctrine now they've eliminated the possibility that they would ever have to face any type of consequences for any of the yeah, things they're that gonna they be say. going like oh no we'll mm -hmm. be in heaven oh they're gonna be somewhere <laughs> they're not gonna be on this earth and it's coming oh, they're gonna soon. be on governing body island I wish. I wish we could send duck them away there with now. The billions. They probably do own an island. Do not doubt it. They have the money to. I mean, they own the whole mansion and nobody. So. Right? Uh, Beth. What was they, that? Beth they would Sharon. Sit on a mansion. A mansion is nothing to them. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember what it was. Was it the last broadcasting or was it a recent video where they were just showing like all of their Bethel complexes that they've been building? over and i was like wait what why are they building all of these bethels like i in my mind bethel was always a center for printing magazines and then now they're just sort of translation offices but you don't need this huge gigant like everyone realizes you can just like click a little like tab on your browser and translate mm -hmm. the damn thing like pretty yeah. quick and you have someone proofread it like one guy could do this from his house like you wouldn't need something that could staff hundreds and hundreds of people so why why do they have all this building and again i always come back to the same thing is it just like their escape plan you gotta have multiple routes they did make a building for translation because i know i was an american sign language they created a whole department a big giant department for videos to be translated i think it's in florida Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's just like more avenues for them to go to if something Wait, were to happen with how big the Bethel complexes are why would you need one of those in Florida that makes zero sense you know Wally we don't ask these questions 
questions. Okay? Well, they can Wally, suck my ass. <laughs> <Wally. Wally. laughs> You're thinking too much, brother. You're thinking the governing I, body works in mysterious ways. Yeah. Yeah. The land grabbing, <laughs> the land grabbing, it just breaks, it just breaks my heart knowing it that we've nice got people and, who are homeless and kids with no homes, orphanages mm -hmm. with kids spilling out and missing kids in the system. I mean, there's so many missing kids in like the Texas system. It, it breaks my heart. But yet these guys have all these office buildings. The, the governing body thinks that witnesses are being persecuted by the media and by other religions and that are they feeling like they're being persecuted by us yes absolutely. Witnesses. Oh, oh yeah the good old classic september broadcasts i mean the apostates said, like, specifically in there that the apostates are the ones manipulating governments and the media again we don't have that much power <laughs> oh I we have know. power baby I didn't know I was doing well, all now, that. Wow! Now that you're over 10k, you might you might have that power, but I'm oh still my God. At, I'm still <laughs> at 800. So uh, I it's work the people on behind it. the scenes. I'm a silly little guy that makes videos for people's entertainment, but the people behind the scenes are the ones that are like actually making changes, like that are petitioning the governments and mm -hmm. legitimately having things. Like I provide nothing other than giggles to people. That's that's my job. But everyone's it's good like at something. Dr. I guess in a sense, I guess in a sense, truly, if if you wanted to define if if the definition of persecution <laughs> was just the fact that we're calling them out on their bullshit and making them treat people with respect and dignity, then I guess, yeah, we're persecuting them. So sorry, we don't want you to treat people like shit. I'm so sorry. How dare yeah, I? I guess persecution is just being mean to someone now. <laughs> Yeah. Well, how dare I tell you that <laughs> your opinion and 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 whatever it is that you're injecting into people's heads is not good stuff. Hurts them. What? They love it. Yeah, they love it. Spiritual food. <laughs> That's all they have. They're starving. They'll take anything. Can, could you imagine considering that entertainment? Ay, oh, Dios mío. Some of these videos, I can't. I, I, just, I can't. Um, I just you know what? I like them. them. I like them. Yeah. They're hilarious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not supposed to be hilarious. You know what? <laughs> I watched Jade my last convention, 2019. I saw Jade in there. I said, "Oh, Jade." 2021. I see her again, and I'm like, "Jade, look how far you've come." <laughs> 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 it is such a cute little saga that we have going on. She's the best thing they have going. They really did, yeah. Jade and and what's her name? Na, Nita. Uh, Nita. Nita. Jade and Nita, Nita is the franchise that n they need to start. Um, She's the Robert up. Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. of their universe. You know what? These really? Man, big salary. <laughs> These I, videos have been waking up people. I have had a lot of conversations with peenies who are weird by some of the wording in the videos without even looking at really? any XJW content. Yeah. They think it's That's awesome. That it, like one of the videos, Jade is talking about her mom confronts her and was just like, yeah, you, um, you used to be very like, you used to ask questions and be very skeptical. Right. What happened to that person? And she was just like, you know, she's not that anymore. She doesn't, she doesn't do that. And her mom was like, why? And people started to ask questions like, what's wrong with asking questions? I thought we were supposed to be skeptical. I thought we were supposed to ask questions. Yeah. Yes, on the outside. But once you're on the inside, shut that crap down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or if you ask questions, you are allowed to use their books yeah. as long as it comes from them. But you better hope you find the answer because if you don't, <laughs> don't take it any further because they're not going to like it. They're not going to like that. That didn't suffice you, whatever you found in their books. I think the whole Jade Nita thing is a huge, like El Bozo moment for Watchtower. I don't know what they're thinking because they're not appealing to yeah. young people. And when they try to, it comes off as so unimaginably cringe that people are cringe. like, what the heck has this organization become? What they really should do is just like try and help 
the older ones that have been in their whole lives and aren't going to leave. Just help them set up automatic payments. That should be their only focus if they want to stay, <laughs> stay su sustainable. Because you're not going to be like, no one's going to watch the Caleb and Sophia videos and be like, wow, guess I don't want ice cream. Here's my money. Guess I don't yeah. want to join science club. Because guess what? the little kids are going to go right back to school and be lonely as hell. So the, the, after produce spending thousands, tens of thousands, hundred thousand dollars making this stupid cartoon for 10 minutes, it solved absolutely nothing. All it says is just, just hang in there kids. And but, the kids going to be like, I don't want to just hang in there. Screw this. I I'm going to go get some friends. I'm curious how much those cartoons do cost. I, I, animation is expensive. But aren't they doing it themselves? I mean, I'm sure the equipment and whatnot and to, you know, the computers, yeah. But, yada, da, da. yeah. but mean, once they've got all that. It's not a lot of money. I remember hearing about it because they bought all the equipment and stuff and everything's in-house. It's not as expensive as you think. Hmm. I guess so, like once I mean, you make the initial investment, then it's not too Right. Mm -hmm. And they have the money to make those initial, you know, other people with small businesses well, I don't know how they just plop it. it down but well you have free free labor i guess so that's the big thing right well we yes, know what they do right. too they just go we need lots of kingdom halls never mind uh kidding just kidding sell it just have kidding. you guys looked if your kingdom hall was sold like the last one you attended Yep. Um, I know that one of mine was, I've been to several just because we moved a lot, but I know that one of mine had was sold and turned into a library. So nice. the one yeah. my parents, uh, went to was sold too. So now they have to drive like 30 or 40 minutes. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Oh, it sucks. It's really ugh. That's not smart at all. Mm -mm. There's uh, two kingdom halls that I went to. Uh, we, we moved uh, like 30 minutes away from where I was. So, uh, but I work in that area and there was two halls and I went to both whenever the, you know, they changed the territories around. One of them is been sold. Boom. So, so they, they have the something dust. like five or six congregations in that one now, I'm sure. Almost everyone that I talk to, one of the con because most people have been to at least three different congregations in their life, and oh, yeah. just about everyone that I've asked that question to has said, "Yeah, one of them has sold." I'm like, "God damn!" Like it's they must lot, be hurt. Right? But I mean, they're just going to be a televangelist organization here within the next ten you years. Think that's like, where it's going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're just going oh, to yeah. be. They'll be on YouTube with the comment section turned off, but with the donate button on and. You know, mm. whatever Mark Sanderson will be the only one alive, I guess, at that point. He'll be given <laughs> talks and just like what's his the preaching bones. work isn't going anywhere. That's not yielding any results. I wonder if Hendrix is gonna come out of PR position or if I think he already is. Someone sent me like a, comp a compilation of like 74 different times he's appeared on uh, a news station. Or oh, he's gonna be a He's going to probably refer replace the first uh, governing body member that kicks off. That's what I'm wondering if he's going to like become a, a GB member because I mean, it's it's just a matter of time. One of these guys is kicking the bucket. I don't know who's first. I thought it was going to be um, Morse, but well, after listen. seeing Let the other day, I was like, "Oh, Puffy Daddy, <laughs> not looking well, good." I mean, this what they'll probably do is the leaders of the excuse me, the organization are going to move back to where they were, like, instead of being right there in front of the camera, whoever's okay. organizing Step and leading back. the organization is going to be like, okay, we're going to be off camera here because mm. this is drawing way too much attention and it looks more like a man-made organization. Whereas if you go back to the old ways of the governing body, oh, they're these wise old men yeah. you yeah. know, studying the Bible. And then you see Tony Morris talking about hot dogs and, and, uh, David explained making his little charts about overlapping David generations explained. and they look like freaking right. idiots. It's like, okay, yeah. if, if they're smart, they'll like move into the background and say, okay, enough of that silliness. We're just going I, to try and keep this thing alive. Back yeah. behind the curtain, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't look behind the curtain. But well, by I'm that time, their only seeing... members are going to be either so delusional or geriatric. I, don't, I doubt it'll even matter. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's just so, yeah, we've moved off topic. 
Yeah, I was uh, move off. Yeah, go it, we can go back to talk. But yeah. <laughs> I just want to I just want to interject here. Uh, I just looked up persecution. Hey, they like to d define words, so I'm going to define words now. Oh, they love defining words. Pulling out the old like a seventh dictionary. grader giving a presentation at school. Oh my god, I hate that so much. Persecution. You know this word defined means. as. Like, oh, thanks. I didn't know. <laughs> Unity can be defined as being united. Well, no kidding. You can't have wow. fantasy without fans, you see? It's like, oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, bum. Okay, so it says hostility and ill treatment, especially because of race or political or religious beliefs, and also persistent annoyance or harassment. Is some definitions hmm. of persecution. Hmm. I guess, um, I mean... Our, all of our like guess... efforts is pretty <laughs> annoying and we are very persistent. Yeah. Well, couldn't we also say that they persecute us by coming to our door and telling us that we're going to die because we're unworthy? So, binary thinking. much. <laughs> well, the, the first thing that comes to mind is all the evil apostates who are just henchmen of Satan who are spreading poison. Oh, that's me. They're horrible people. So, yeah. that's a bit of hostility. Henchmen. We can't wait. <laughs> We can't wait till they're gone like the I am the devil. I am eternal. <laughs> I didn't know the devil's name was Glenn. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not the devil. I'm just Glenn. <laughs> I'm not a devil, but I play one on TV. Um, but, but I also, play one on YouTube. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but it also says ill treatment. So can you think of much worse ill treatment than what happens when people are shunned? Like, hello, uh, Larchwood. The other day, Larchwood, if you don't follow them on Twitter, please follow them. But they always are sharing, like, old old pictures from Watchtower Weeks, whatever, magazines. And one of them specifically said about a wife shunning her husband because he wasn't, I don't know, he wasn't treating her right, so she just ignored him. And how bad that was and how that can damage and hurt a person. Like, Bish, did you just did you just say what oh, I think you said? I saw that. Yeah, yeah that was, you that was horrible. You say that shunning, and they literally said the word shunning. So you say shunning is bad to do to somebody because it's harmful, but yet you'll do it to any Tom, yep. Dick, and Harry. You'll do it to your child. Yeah, they also had an article I want to say like years ago, uh, basically persecuting the Catholics because they love to do that and um yeah. they love to do that and they were saying how excommunication is just unbiblical and just inhumane yep. and awful and that you should be a jehovah's witness because we don't do that and then just a few decades later they're doing it we, but they call it disfellowshipping which is not the same thing as excommunication apparently even though the same things happen in both. So how right. is it unbiblical when they when the Catholics do it, but when you guys do it, it's so it's biblical. It's okay. <laughs> I want to know who who was it that specifically put that through? Is that that was? Do you remember when that was? I don't. Was I it the four forty? No. When did they start? The seventies. They started just fellowshipping. I can't remember now. Just fellowshipping for like that just just. At all. Know. That air was... was the January 8th, 1947. Um, That's how long it's been? A week. And yeah. then probably another five or six God years damn. after that. I think it was 52 where they instituted. Um, 52 or 53. And then it wasn't until the 80s where they had, even if you disassociate, you get disfellowshipped as well. Right. right? And that, that had everything to do okay. with France. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's when they said, well, it looks like we you have to be a cult now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no no sense in, in faking it anymore. We, we've been trying, but. Now we have to go hardcore. This is what you made me do. Look what you made me do. <laughs> Typical uh, abuse tactic <laughs> tactics. You Oddly enough, that, do that, does feel, that does feel like something they're saying. Uh, these, mm. were your, these were your choices. Mm-hmm. And you wanted this. And then they'll just go back to just trying to look like a normal, regular, peaceful religion, trying to be good in the community and stuff like that. But it's it's kind of fascinating, like, how many waves the Watchtower has had over the years. It's like they just go Definitely. in and out of, like, the exact same things, and then they always say it's new. It's, it's really funny to me. 
the lack they of self awareness is, is hilarious. Like, wow, we got this brand new thing. We're preaching on the streets. You go back a hundred years where they're all walking <laughs> yeah. around with carts and signs. signs. You're like, advertise, uh, advertise. We're literally doing this a hundred years ago. Oh, now we're doing these things on like national media. What do you think Rutherford was doing? Rutherford literally was like going on radio talk shows to give his like talks. It's nothing. It's literally nothing new. It's just recycled, regurgitated crap. I want to see them go on a bicycle they... tour again. Well, with that the little cartoon they were doing with the bicycles and the advertiser and the the horse pulling the cart and the soft uh, emotional music to make you feel like, oh wow, look how long this has been going on. But you're right; it's it's really the same stuff, just new technology to help them along, I suppose. But at least it's good again. that our work will be short. You know, Watchtower in 10 years, they'll be all over and said no one will really care about them anymore. And we can move on with our lives. And how great I it would be. That. I would love that. Absolutely. Really? Well, not, that generation's got a overdue expiration date. So. Yeah, the generation thing is one part of it. And just, I, I think, especially after the pandemic, there are so many people that might not be awake they might be completely mentally in, but they just don't want to be witnesses anymore. I, I look at my grandparents and my aunt and uncle as a great example. Uh, grand grandfather, he was an elder for many, many years. Uh, got away from it, blah, 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 work. Came back, elder again, and then he uh, took a job in China where he couldn't go to meetings or anything anymore. You know, it's in China. And after he came back from that like little three year stint, he's just never been able to go back to the meetings regularly again, just has no interest yeah. in it. Because in his mind, talking to him, it's like, well, I was able to maintain my faith. I was able to maintain my relationship with Jehovah and my spirituality without going to a kingdom hall. I was able to do all of these things without, you know, the constant grind of being a Jehovah's witness. And so. It's fine as long as you believe it, which is to be Christian, right? It starts with like a yeah. faith in your heart. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not a Christian, so I would explain it poorly. So I shouldn't even <gasps> cry. I know. Shocker. I get along with Christians just fine. But yeah, I, I think after the pandemic, so many people are just going to not want to be a Jehovah's Witness or do the daily grind. They might still tune in to meetings. I talked to one person. They said their uh zoom attendance is higher than their in-person attendance yeah, oh really like, and that makes perfect sense because why would you want to go and drive for an hour when i mean gas here is like six dollars a gallon like i don't want to go and pay 40 bucks just to go to a meeting oh. like that's ridiculous so now you got to drive further that's yeah true. like and what now i got to drive by a tesla in order to even make it sense of going to the meeting like it's freaking ridiculous yeah, it really it's, is. And, it, and it's kind of like a relationship because um, being away from the meeting so long, doing the Zoom, all the changes of that, mm -hmm. it's sort of like you fell out of love with the organization. Mm -hmm. You I got comfortable sort of, being yeah. a little distant. And you were able to maintain this idea because you were even being told that, no, staying at home and doing a Zoom meeting, that was maintaining your spirituality. You were told that you could be a spiritual person from home. So now right. when they're like, hey, you need to be a spiritual person. But it, so it's like, well, which is it? I thought I could do that. Well, that was because mm -hmm. of the circumstances. Nothing's really changed. I can still be well, spiritual. Okay. At I can home. find you. You'll be able to find a circumstance in your mind. Like, yeah, I'm tired. That's a circumstance. I guess I can still be hey, look, a cat. I don't know. where. Meow. Yay. Content cat. Oh, ZZ's. ZZ. He's so annoying. He he's not in the in the office today. He oh, was, ZZ. He was unbearable. Little rascally rabbit. He was just like attention, attention, me, 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 me. Oh, I love How it. dare he? He was yeah. Sometimes doing a little too much for me. Uh, as your cat's Half back there licking itself, Reg. I know. I'm like, Sammy, you're doing a lot on camera. <laughs> it's got to play okay. all up. You, we can censor the I'm little so talk sorry. about dishes. I'm uh, hey, uh, Wally, is it like 10% of your time when editing, putting little faces over ZZ's butt? Um, no, it's not that hard. I just go to Canva, download a PNG. It's it's yeah. pretty quick. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm like, oh, I want to see little booty. Do you do boo I'm just you, kidding. You were like that little kid that was like, see a cat walk by and like. <laughs> <laughs> that's so mean i would never but it's funny to think about it <laughs> my goodness yeah, I, gracious. Think, I think the younger generation a lot of them just don't want to do it they don't they don't have the time they don't have mm -hmm. the energy they they're tired of they're working two or three jobs and then some of them are trying to pine they're exhausted Boy. They're exhausted and they're starting to see that this is the way that the watchtower wants them to be is unsustainable. They can't, they can't maintain that lifestyle. Yep. So a lot of the younger ones are starting to see it for what it is. And a lot of them are slowly drifting away, which I think is yep. interesting. And now well, like, like that enough time has gone by, they will have seen like there's there's going to be a farther distance like for me you know my grandpa he was still in it and so there's still some of that connection like oh he's been serving for so long and it goes mm. back so far i mean i'm like a fourth generation but you remove it one more generation and then like the starting point is people that came into it in the 90s and you think how long has this organization been around how many generations have come and gone yeah. and like doomsday mm -hmm. cults do not last like hundreds of years. They just don't. They can rebrand as many times as they like. But if you look at history, doomsday cults continue to shrink and get smaller and smaller and smaller after a certain point. And as soon as the generation thing happened, I think Watchtower pretty much plateaued as far as growth. And it's all sort of just stale and it's that. going down. They should have mm -hmm. never made that. That whole section never made sense to me i had so many questions after well they, that. they solved it in the in the 90s as well they said well the wick it's the wicked generation and so as long as you have wicked people bada bing bada boom that's what the generation was talking about so they kind of solved it they got rid of the it's anything to do with 1914 and basically said it's just anyone wicked on the earth that's who it applies to and they just moved away from it and I think that was the smartest decision they could make because, yeah, a lot of people left. And when did that uh, come in? Like 1990 something? One, two? Something like that. I don't know. 95. 95. That's when it changed because most of the people had died off. And then final thoughts, and then final thoughts, final on, thoughts. on their persecution complex, I guess. I'll Puppy go last. Brown. Puppy Brown. Um, I guess I can go first. I, okay. Um, yes. yes. I really don't even know what to say. Um, so when it comes to the persecution complex or persecution kink, um, it's just something that's ingrained in fundies. It's how they've been instructed to handle the world. It's the default to the explanation as to how things, why things go wrong. It's, there's no culpability. You don't have to take responsibility. All you have to do is say, well, this is how it's supposed to be. This is how we were told it's going to happen. So anytime something bad happens because the organizing organization is doing something they shouldn't, does not matter. It would always just be seen as oh, got to protect myself. I knew this was coming. So, I mean, it's, everybody recognizes that if you're Ex Jehovah's Witness, if you're ex funder, you probably already know that. But if you're somebody who's kind of just starting to question these things, just think of the program and why they are programmed to behave in that manner and try to just recognize when your defense goes up, when somebody maybe gives you information that you're, it sounds scary, instead of getting defensive, it's okay to actually research and look into stuff instead of thinking like oh i did something wrong it's okay to be wrong look at it think about it marinate on it and then how do you feel it stop going with the initial reaction that's uh, there you go i'm well versed <laughs> in being wrong yeah being wrong is okay it's it's, it's what fine i do to more often than being right oh god yeah you're next. <laughs> I don't know who you point. Okay, okay. I'm trying to figure out. 
There's Glenn. <laughs> oh, what just happened? Oh, shoot. Something just came up on my screen. I don't know what it was. Okay. Uh-oh, right. what's me? Okay. I don't know I don't know much to say either, but what I will say is when it comes to persecution, it's definitely something that I view as like a scare tactic um, of remaining to keep members within the organization, um, which is uh, one of the key aspects of cults. It's a me versus them mentality. Yeah. So looking up things, like doing research about how cults are defined, the tactics that they use, seeing the similarities between fundies, Mormons, Scientologists, how they all use the same yeah. tactics of persecution to keep members in, you'll start to see that the witnesses, if you're a witness, um, is no different than every other cult mm -hmm. like them. So I definitely piggyback off of Ryan, do the research on what cults are. And I think once you do that, you'll see where Jehovah's Witnesses stand. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Good. That's excellent advice. Well, well I'm going to make this uh, a three piggy high stack here. Because <laughs> oh, you, you, you can see here that, um, yeah, the uh, LDS church talks about being persecuted. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I looked up uh, the um, Seventh day Adventist. There's not too much on it, but that's just the way their website's set up. Poor, um, poor. Talk, talking about persecution. Um, I couldn't find anything on Scientology that necessarily said that they were being uh, uh, persecuted, but same thing. You know, it's <clears throat> it's not uncommon with all these different types of groups for them to say, we're the ones that are being picked on because we're, you know, we're God's representatives. We're the true church. So we got it right. Who's 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 right? Who's going to be the one that's really got the truth? So just because you feel like you're being persecuted doesn't mean you really are. Mm -hmm. They're all going to make that claim. And they all do. I thought they that was the most interesting part of the waking up process. I said, you guys say this too? <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Oh. No, I'm right. And and uh, just to further the thought, uh, as far as us persecuting them it's not an ill like we don't want to do harm to anyone right. we just want to inform people right and you know if if persecution is annoyance and harassment well we do a little bit of that because we we feel it's important we got to keep it up we care i would be remiss if i wasn't honest with people i feel like i need to be honest with people and how it affected my life and i'm absolutely certain that other people are feeling the same way but are afraid to speak their truth because of their indoctrination and they're wasting their lives away and that's what really motivates me the most to keep doing research keep posting videos yeah. keep talking about it because just that freedom that you have once you realize that it's not real and you mm -hmm. get into the real world and live your truth, whatever that truth is. I want that for everybody. Yeah. So that means that I need to keep going back in to do more research, and that's what it's going to do. We're trying to help people live their best lives. Love it. Amen. Amen. Ramen. <laughs> Ramen. Ramen? Now I'm Ramen. hungry. All right. I want, I want some soup. <laughs> Oh, uh, do I have to do a closing thing? Uh, yeah, Glenn. Yeah. Yes. If you're a Jehovah's Witness and you happen to be stumbling upon this, or you're someone that's just interested in like the ex-religious community or anything, here's why this is something that we're even remotely interested in talking about, is when you think about being persecuted, I bet you think about it in a positive way. You think about people that were the forefathers of causes that you truly believe in, that you could stand behind. They were fighting for human rights. You, know, you picture uh, these massive historical figures that were standing up for what they thought was right. I have a question for you. Why are Jehovah's Witnesses being persecuted? Why is anyone that's claiming to be pers persecuted for their religion being persecuted? 
Generally speaking, it's because they are intolerant of other religious ideas. Think about that. The reason they're being persecuted is the same thing they are doing to other people. If you think it's religious persecution, well, they need to just accept my religion and let me worship exactly how I want. Isn't that my right? Motherfucker. Think about what you're saying. If you're a Jehovah's Witness, you can't say that exact same thing. Wake up. It's important, and that's we're going to keep talking about it until we see change come. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of the Apostate Coalition. Don't forget to drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. This guy's a professional. Bye. <laughs> it's about the thing. To destiny, all that pain just so you could see everything you need is inside you. I don't know what's happening right now. Help! Yeah. I don't know either. Help this me. Might a, this might have to be a. It's a lot going on. This might have to be a Patreon only for for this bit. Jeez. Uh, reel it in, guys. Come on.